Assalamu alaikum students. As we had started our obstetrics and gynecological nursing subject with the introduction and then with the female pelvis. But due to the current situation, it we couldn't complete it because of the network issues. So we had stopped at the we had we were left with the pelvic diameters and we had stopped at the landmarks. I will uh, briefly repeat <laughs> these are the landmarks. Wait, I will show you here as you have completed already this is the pubic tubercle this is the pubic crest and this is the symphysis pubis and this is the pectinal line of pubis as some student had the doubt this is this and this is the ischial spine actually uh, it is in the cavity but right above it there is also this one is actually the larger protuberance there uh, it is largely uh, projected but here it is slightly uh, projected which is uh, known as iliopectinal eminence so i can show you by this diagram also you will get a bit clear your confusion wait ha huh. here you can see these are the landmarks which we have already discussed you see the a it is here he has shown a bit this sacral promontory is actually there it is a projected part the b is uh, here arrow you can see it's sacral ala or sacral wing uh, c is the sacroiliac joint uh, d is the iliopectinal line and iliopubic eminence it is here e you can see uh, if you see the it's the line has been rubbed here erased here this is the iliopubic eminence then there is pectinal line <laughs> this one and then there is pubic tubercle that is this one and uh, there is pubic crest and symphysis pubis so these were the landmarks by this we uh, completed the brim uh, then the, there is another part of the uh, this pelvis that is the cavity cavity is actually the empty space if you see here this empty space this empty space uh, it is uh, <coughs> actually occupied the fetal head occupies this space and comes out from the outlet that is from here so then after that uh, there is <coughs> outlet outlet is made up of the border of weight i will show you if you see here outlet is made up of the border of tip of ischial uh, this tuber ischial spines ischial spines ischial tubercles and coccyx with this we need to uh, see from outer side that is the out, uh, outlet i will show you you had sent me some pics from there see from here this one and this uh, this coccyx tip and these ischial spines this is the whole outlet from where the baby comes out now talking about the diameters <laughs> students the diameters will remain like you will remain confused because here it's impossible to demonstrate uh, whenever you will join the college i will show you the di diameters there still we will try so basically there are uh, three uh, diameters that is <laughs> first is anterior posterior that is this one anterior posterior there is uh, transverse and there is oblique okay now uh, we have to study these all these diameters um, uh, of uh, different things different parts like pelvic brim pelvic cavity and pelvic outlet so if we talk about the pelvic brim we have uh, three diameters wait <laughs> if we see we have anterior posterior anterior posterior we have transverse diameter and we have oblique diameter uh, this is all about this but 
if we take the uh, this brim the first is the anatomy this one anterior posterior diameter it has further three types that is uh, anatomical diameter anatomical second one is trans this uh, obstetric obstetric diameter and third is diagonal this obstetric and diagonal they are also known as obstetric conjugate diagonal conjugate this is actually and brim brim ka anterior posterior diameter anterior posterior diameter has three parts one is anatomical diameter obstetric conjugate and diagonal conjugate this diagonal conjugate is of clinical importance now what what we meant by con uh, this uh, clinical importance by clinical uh, importance we mean that while we are doing this pv uh, per vaginal examination it is the only diameter we can measure i will show you i will go to the pic which student had shared of our college this yeah here see if we do like uh, she has inserted if we insert our finger our thumb will be here we can place our thumb here and we can extend our fingers up to the sacral promontory by middle finger or uh, this uh, index finger we can extend there but we can only feel this part of the pubis because these parts will be attached to the muscles so this uh, that's why we say this uh, diagonal conjugate is the only of clinical importance is the only diameter which we can clinically measure now uh, this is the uh, how this starts it extends from the midpoint of the sacrum i will show you wait it extends from the midpoint this is the midpoint of sacral promontory uh, to the <coughs> lower portion of the symphysis pubis from here up to हियर नीचे 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 वाले पोर्शन तक तो ये हम मेजर कर सकते हैं नाउ हाउ कैन वी इफ वी कैन मेजर दिस एंड दिस इज द डायगोनल कॉन्जुगेट नाउ व्हाट इज द ऑब्सेट्रिक कॉन्जुगेट ऑब्सेट्रिक कॉन्जुगेट इज सिंपली फ्रॉम मिड पॉइंट ऑफ दिस सेक्रल प्रोमोंट्री आई विल शो यू ग्रीन वन इज दिस ऑब्सेट्रिक कॉन्जुगेट फ्रॉम मिड पॉइंट ऑफ सेक्रल प्रोम टू द मिड पॉइंट हियर टू द मिड पॉइंट ऑफ सिंथेसिस प्यूबिस and uh, uh, di anatomical diameter is uh, starts from the midpoint of that i will mark in blue from the midpoint of the white in white uh, midpoint of sacral promontory to the <coughs> upper portion of the this one uh, symphysis pubis upper border of the symphysis pubis so if we can measure only now the question arises if we can measure only diagonal conjugate that is from the sacral promontory uh, to the this lower portion of this how can we measure then anatomical diameter and uh, this <coughs> obstetric conjugate that is simple we have to if the simply if, uh, when we measure the diagonal uh, this conjugate that is about 12 that's about 12 cm so for diagonal uh, conjugate if we subtract minus 1.2 cm that gives us the anatomical diameter and if we subtract 1.5 to uh, 2 cm uh, this that gives us equally um, the measurement of the obstetric conjugate okay so we can say the obstetric conjugate is uh, a bit larger than the this longer than uh, this anatomical diameter and uh, this diagonal is uh, larger above all so it is 12 cm now going back so these were the anterior posterior diameters of pelvic brim अभी हम पैल्विक ब्रिम पे ही है तीन टाइप्स है वन इज द डायगनल कंजुगेट देर इज ऑब्सटेट्रिक कंजुगेट देर एंड देन देर इज द एंटीरियो पोस्टीरियर दिस एनाटमिकल डायमीटर सो
uh, this is about this now start as the e oblique diameter oblique diameter is uh, from the sacroiliac joint to the opposite iliopubic eminence जैसे मैंने आपको लैंडमार्क्स दिखाए थे फिर भी मैं यहाँ पे दिखाती हूँ ये होता है सैक्रो इलियक जॉइंट एक साइड का यहाँ से लेके यहाँ तक है ओब्लिक डायमीटर एक सेकेंड इसको थोड़ा फ्रॉम दे वन इफ वी सी फ्रॉम लेफ्ट साइड फ्रॉम लेफ्ट सैक्रो इलियक जॉइंट टू फ्रॉम लेफ्ट सैक्रो इलियक जॉइंट टू ऑपोजिट इलियो पैक्टिनल एमिनेंस अभी स्ट्रेट नहीं हो रही है क्योंकि ये थोड़ा सा ये है या हम यहाँ से बोल सकते हैं यहाँ से लेके यहाँ तक जो इलियोपैक्टेनल एमिनेंस ऑलरेडी शो की गई है आपको वहाँ पे ठीक है तो दिस इज द ओब्लिक डायमीटर ऑफ पेल्विक ब्रिम एंड इट्स यूजुअली इलेवन इलेवन सेंटीमीटर सो इफ वी गो टू द डायगनल दिस ट्रांसफर्स डायमीटर दिस इज द बिटवीन टू इलियो पैक्टिनल लाइन्स इफ यू सी टू इलियो पैक्टिनल लाइन्स दैट इज फ्राम हेयर अप टू हेयर so this is the largest diameter of the brim that is uh, it is 13 cm 13 okay so these were the uh, this uh, diameters of the pelvic brim that is anterior posterior diameter which has further three parts anatomical diameter obstetric conjugate and diagonal conjugate we can only measure diagonal conjugate because all others have muscles attached uh, then uh, and then we can uh, uh, calculate the obstetric diameter and anatomical diameter by subtracting 1.2 and 1.5 or 2 cm accordingly so now going to the cavity this one is the cavity so it has equal diameters from all sides uh, and some say it has no oblique diameter some say that uh, it has all the diameters but 12 cm because there is no measurement and uh, we can say the only measurement is about its depth and usually usually the depth the depth of the pelvic cavity is 4 cm so uh, coming to towards the pelvic outlet outlet we can see here in another pic this one is the outlet from here to this this one is outlet so anterior posterior uh, diameter and transverse diameter aur isme kehte oblique diameter nahi hota hai sorry cavity mein hote hai but equal hote hai sare to uh, where from does this anterior posterior diameter start it starts from the lower border of the symphysis pubis that is here here lower border this one is the lower border of the this lower border up to this uh, coccyx Uh, to the tip of the coccyx and it is the biggest diameter of the pelvic outlet that is the anterior posterior diameter is about 13 it's about 13 cm and if we see the transverse diameter transverse diameter is 11 cm that is the pelvis uh, wait the, the transverse diameter is simply between the ischial tuberosities here between two ischial uh, tuberosities there it is and it's most probably 11 cm so if we have to uh, there is a formula for uh, remembering this i will show you you must have seen this still i will show you if you check this anterior posterior oblique and transverse diameter from brim to outlet from brim it's 11 12 13 it will be easy do you remember to draw at this uh this board 11 12 13 uh 12 12 12 13 12 11 uh this pelvic brim 11 uh, this anterior posterior diameter is 11 while as outlet it is 13 uh, this oblique diameter is all over 12 cm uh, this outlet has no oblique diameter and for transverse uh, diameter it is the biggest diameter in the pelvic brim between two ilio uh, between two uh, pectinal lines and uh, uh, in the outline it is between two ischial tuberosities that is 11 cm this is the easiest way to remember this 11 12 13 12 12 12 13 12 11 that means it's a bit opposite in in op this brim and outlet so this was all about pelvic diameters which you may get confused i will show you in the college now we have types of pelvis 
actually there are uh, various types but before that there are two categories that is false pelvis and true pelvis now what is this true pelvis and what is false pelvis true pelvis and false pelvis actually there is a line which we say linear terminals it's actually an imaginary line that uh, divides uh, the true pelvis and false pelvis how it divides what is this and most commonly it is the pelvic brim ka border isi ko hum kehte hain ilio linear terminals agar hum yahan se dekhenge to iske upar jo hai ye fossa wagera ye sare false pelvis mein aate hain aur iska function hota hai to support the body and body to maintain the body mechanics however there is no role in the labor or in, in obstetrics and this uh, part below this pelvic brim that is this cavity brim and this this is all required for the normal vaginal delivery and for obstetrical importance that is in childbirth this part so these are the two categories the one is false pelvis and another is true pelvis so if we now check the other types other classification so if we go false pelvis is formed by upper flared out portion of the ileum laterally iliac fossa poster no need to define this as you all know uh, its function is to protect the abdominal organs and it has no obstetric impo uh, importance except that it provides certain landmarks for external pelvimetry external pelvimetry and this all these pelvic measurements this all is known as pelvimetry so if we see the types there are basically four types mainly four types there are a lot of types but mainly there are four types in the normal category that is gynoid anthropoid android platypoid you can see the shape here and if we explain them one by one first of all there is gynoid pelvis that is present in the 50% of the female population it's also known as the female pelvis why because there uh, this type of pelvis is most commonly seen in women and it is the suitable uh, pelvis for childbirth because it has the wider brim you can see here this brim is wider ischial spines are blunt means they are not sharp and subpubic angle is 90 degree which i have already discussed the between two these it's 90 degree that means a person with a gynoid pelvis has maximum chances to deliver normally vaginally that is not considered as normal then there is anthropoid pelvis anthropoid pelvis favors a posterior position of the pelvis posterior position of the pelvis uh, you have not yet gone through the position that is right occipital posterior right occipital lateral right occipital anterior same wise left occipital anterior that is the most common position so posterior means when the fetal head is from the posterior comes from the posterior side that is from this side occipital touches but from posterior side the face may be uh, to the opposite side of the outlet uh, so this is the anthropoid this is uh, mostly uh, favors posterior position of the fetus and it's oval in shape you can check you can see here this is oval in shape its mid transverse diameter is shorter it is seen in tall women with narrow shoulders jo lambi aurat hoti hai unme zyada पाया जाता है इट्स कॉमनली फाउंड इन ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ ही मेल्स दैन देयर इज एंड्रॉयड पैलविस एंड्रॉयड पैलविस इज सीन इन ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द वेमेन इट्स कॉमनली नोन एज मेल पैलविस बिकॉज इट आकर्स मोर फ्रीकेंटली इन मैन इन मैन वी हैव यूजली एंड्रॉयड पैलविस दिस इज हार्ट शेपड ब्रिम यू कैन सी हियर द ब्रिम इज हार्ट शेपड एंटीरियो पॉस्टीरियर डायमीटर इज शॉर्टर ट्रांसफर्स डायमीटर इज वाइडर एंड चाइल्ड बर्थ इज डिफिकल्ट obviously then there is the fourth type that is flat pelvic pelvis isko hum kehte hain flat pelvis and it is usually uh, rare and in uh, present in 5% of the women uh, it's kidney shaped brim you can see here like this and anterior posterior diameter is smaller transverse diameter is wider not conduct to vag vaginal delivery so we it's not possible uh, in a women with platypeloid pelvis so vaginal delivery is not possible so moving forward these are all the types of pelvis now if we see finally the deformities of the pelvis there are a lot of deformities actually it's not in our syllabus still i will like to give you a, these 
a little bit idea first of all there is contracted pelvis if we see the contracted pelvis uh, as Shaja Ma'am must have told you contracted pelvis is the one in which there is reduction in any of the diameter be it anterior posterior be it uh, this transverse diameter be it oblique diameter by 1.5 or 2 centimeters so all of these other types are actually contracted pelvis so if we discuss them one by one first of all there is rickettic pelvis and this rickettic pelvis it is simply a distorted and contracted pelvis as a result of rickets means the person who is having rickets may be having rickettic pelvis another is asymmet asymmetrical pelvis asymmetrical pelvis as indicated by the name there is no symmetry there will be no plain pelvic brim no this there is uh, there must be the anterior posterior diameter must be a uh, longer transverse diameter well, there is no symmetry and if we see robert's pelvis robert's pelvis is the narrowed uh, pelvis that is narrowed transversely due to the absence of ala of the sacrum मतलब जो विंग्स होते हैं सैक्रम के वो प्रेजेंट नहीं होते जब वो प्रेजेंट नहीं होते ओब्वियसली उसकी वजह से ट्रांसवर्स डायमीटर कम होगा क्योंकि पैक्टिना लाइन सीधे आएगी एला होगा नहीं तो उसके बाद है निगल्स पैलविस निगल्स पैलविस जो है इट इज कंट्रैक्टेड इन ओब्लिक डायमीटर जो ओब्लिक डायमीटर होता है अगर हम देखेंगे ऐसे पेल्विस का ये वाला जो है ये कंट्रैक्टेड होता है क्यों होता है कंट्रैक्टेड क्योंकि इसमें एनकेलोसिस हुई होती है सैक्रो इलियक जॉइंट की एनकेलोसिस यू नो फ्यूजन ऑफ टू दिस बोन्स विच गिव स्टिफनेस तो वहाँ पे सैक्रो इलेक्स इन कॉन्ड्रोसिस होता नहीं है और थोड़ा सा इम्परफेक्ट डेवलपमेंट ऑफ सैक्रम का भी इम्परफेक्ट डेवलपमेंट होता है और कॉक्सिक्स का भी थोड़ी इम्परफेक्ट डेवलपमेंट होती है कॉक्सिक्स की भी इम्परफेक्ट डेवलपमेंट होती है तो ये निगल्स पैलविस था निगल्स पैलविस के बाद आता है हमारा ऑस्टियो मेलेसिक ऑस्टियो मेलेसिक पैलविस इज सिंपली ए वेमेन हु हैज़ ऑस्टियो मेलेशिया एंड ड्यू टू द प्रेशर ऑफ द ट्रंक ऑन द सैक्रम एंड दिस लेटरल प्रेशर फ्रॉम द फीमोरल हेड to the this uh, uh, acetabulum uh, it gets contracted like three parts it becomes like three parts of the pelvis uh, pressure from uh, you just imagine pressure pressure from the uh, acetabulum due to the femoral head and to the sacrum so it uh, this pubis becomes a peak shape just ko hum beaked pelvis bhi kehte i will show you the diagram wait you can see this is the osteo malacic uh, pelvis it uh, the three it becomes like it has said three parts like see it becomes triangular and this pubis becomes beak shaped that's why it uh, is known as beaked pelvis also so this is because of the osteo malacia you can see here also this becomes beak shaped like here narrowed and this becomes three part uh, pelvis so this is the osteomalytic pelvis so coming to the another another deformities we have assimilation assimilated pelvis assimilation pelvis is in which the ilias ilia articulate in the vertebral column that means um, these parts wait if this is ilia they articulate with the vertebral column like they get joined with it if it is from higher side then it's higher this and it is from lower lower side this so it gets uh, articulated so then there is kyphosis kyphosis you know if we see in kashmiri at kub chuana kyphosis mein there is <laughs> deformed pelvis um, that is by uh, marked by the increase of the conjugate uh, conjugate diameter of the brim and decrease uh, in the this of uh, outlet anterior posterior diameter of outlet i will show you conjugate is actually uh, anterior posterior diameter here what happens in kyphosis mm, this portion it gets this portion it gets extended increased while as in outlet mm, there this there is decrease in the anterior posterior diameter uh, it becomes widen from upper side and narrow from lower side so because of the kyphosis and another type is another deformity 
what is the another deformity that is scoliosis you know that is because of the scoliosis and spondylosis this is spondylothesis kya hota hai there is usually the dislocation of there is usually the dislocation of the th third last lumbar l5 or rarely the l3 or l4 vertebra jiski wajah se dislocation hoti hai aur ye sacrum thoda aage aa jata hai jab ye aage aa jata hai to pelvic brim ka jo dai thoda sa ye defect hota usi ko hum kehte hain spondylolisthesis actually it is the anterior or posterior dislocation but in this case there is anterior anterior dislocation due to which the sacrum comes forward and the pelvic brim gets deformed so these are all about the deformities of the pelvis by this we um, completed here the female pelvis and for other lectures we will see what happens whether we will give online class or what